I recently created this burger render using ZBrush and Octane and thought, why not show you a few lighting setups? Because, well, I think lighting setups play a crucial role in how you present your renders. So here are a few lighting setups that I made in case you need some insight or inspiration. But before I get into that, I want to let you know that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. When I first took the plunge from photography into the realm of 3D, it was Skillshare that helped make it really easy because it was on Skillshare where I took my very first 3D course. And now with many of us having slower work schedules and school breaks, it's been easier to find ourselves with more time to learn a new skill or brush up on an old one. For me as a Cinema 4D user, I've been wanting to brush up on my knowledge of Blender because it just keeps getting better with new updates and I really want to incorporate it into my pipeline. So I have been eyeing that class by Derek Elliott because it just looks so well done and I'm sure it's packed with great info. Now, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, which is highly unlikely, Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry experts across film, illustration, design, freelance, productivity, and much, much more. They've also included three new class topics, creative careers, creative inspiration, and one that we've all been excited about, AI and innovation. So whatever skill you have or want Want to learn, Skillshare can help you take that skill to the next level. The first 500 people to use my link in the description below will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. So take advantage and get started today. All right, so let me actually give you an overview of what we're gonna be doing here first for the lighting setup. The first light we're gonna do is a key light right about here. So we'll go key light. And then for the next light, we're gonna have a rim right about here call this the rim. Okay. And then the last light will be a fill, which will be right about here. And let me just put that right here. And then if you look on the left side, it's still the viewport of a burger, but um, the key lights pretty much going to hit right here. The rim lights going to be right about here. This is the key. And then the fill light will be I mean, I a different color here. Uh, the fill light will pretty much fill in a dark shadow right about uh, here. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull up Octane. I'm gonna hold Alt-Q, which is my uh, shortcut for Octane here. I'm gonna hit render and we'll take a look at what the first light will do. All right, so the render started and obviously it's dark because there's no light in the scene, but I'm gonna tick on the first key light. And there we go. So again, what this is doing, again, you can see that uh, the key light pretty much covers this portion of the burger right here. I'm actually get a different color so you can see what I'm doing here. This portion right here uh, for the key light, this part's pretty much all in shadow, which is a look in and of itself if you want that. But since I'm doing a, a food render and the focus is very much on the textures itself, I do want light on the dark areas as well, but still in a way where it capture, it has this moody look to it where there's still shadows and there's highlights, not a completely flat image or you know, anything like that. So, all right, so let's move on to the rim light, which is gonna be the light that's gonna be right here on the right side of the burger. So if I tick this on, you're gonna see this light adding a nice rim light on the right side. And let me go back to the 3D view so I can so I can show you what it's doing here. Um, obviously you can do other directions for this. So if we go this way, you can see the light kind of hitting a little bit more to the side. If I go this way a little bit more, you can see if I go to the top here, uh, this light's pretty much at a perpendicular angle exactly with the key light. And this could work as well, but this doesn't turn into a rim light anymore. This is more like a fill light now because this the power of this light is actually less than that. And you can tell that by the highlights right here. And that works as well. It's definitely a style, but I like having this as a rim light and keeping this light the dominant light in the scene. So I'm going to push this back toward... The wall here and I like this direction with respect to the camera if you can see it here let me actually zoom out and let me go ahead and draw it for you so this rim light with respect to the camera here is an obtuse angle right this kind of angle towards the with respect to the camera gives you this kind of light um, typically I think in cinematography as well most lights are placed in this fashion they're usually backlighting the camera this obviously is not a you know, a cinematic image, but it works for this as a rim light. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take the fill light and you can see right there, I actually placed it right about here and you can see the difference it made in this area right about here. Let me actually, yeah, so this part looks a lot much brighter than the previous one, right? 
So if I close this and turn that back off, you can see how dark it, how much darker it gets. It really depends on your style. Even regardless of style, in my opinion, I think it's best to have the fill light in there just so that you have flexibility in post-production. So if I turn this back on, you can see what that looks like. All right, so let's move on to the second setup. Now for this one, I didn't use any area lights. So if you're familiar with Octane in Cinema 4D, you know this symbol right here is an Octane area light. This is pretty much the area lights that you use to place lights in your scene and so on and so forth. But for this case, I used an HDRI. HDRIs are super powerful. If you're not familiar with them, they're just HDRI images that encompass the scene. So you don't see it right now, but they encompass basically the entire viewport. And they're pretty much high definition images that have lighting information in them. This HDRI is actually from Polyhaven. And if I pull up Polyhaven here, this is Polyhaven and whoa, it's really big. So let me go ahead and full screen it for you. Um, this is pretty much uh, Polyhaven's website. If I go to their main site, you can see they have HDRI textures and models. Um, this is the tab that I went to. So I clicked in here and I searched in. Here's a, on the side over here is a bunch of filters. You can go indoor. You can choose skies and things like that. So, and you have a bunch of HDRIs and they have these little spheres so that you can see the kind of lighting that these types of pictures give to this sort of scene. So what I selected was a, an HDRI called Studio Small and it's literally a picture of a photo studio. Uh, you can see the light here, you can see this light here and then this light above. And it's kind of hard to imagine because you're seeing it on a flat plane, but I imagined that this light up, this light over here, that this light was going to be the top down light. And then these two lights over here were going to be kind of the, the rim lights. So that's kind of what I imagined when I saw this image. And that was actually the kind of look I was going for for this setup. But let me go ahead and just show you what that looks like here. So right there, you can see, I'm actually draw it in for you so you can see what I'm talking about. You can see this highlight right here. Um, that's the light coming from above, right? And then we had those two lights coming in from the side. Oops, that's not an arrow uh, coming in from the side. And you can actually see it if I actually move this window over here and if I zoom out a little bit more and I rotate it, you can see there's the same picture I just showed you, but now it's in a 3D type of space. And the first light is right there. It looks like, looks like some sort of beauty dish. And then if I go to the, um, the other side over here, there's the other light. It's a much smaller light. I actually thought it was the same size, but now that I've done this, you can tell it's a much smaller light. And then um, for the top light, I, th I think if I scroll down here, we're gonna see it up the top, there it is. There's the other light, it looks like a beauty dish of some sort. And then we have this light over here, which I think is making it a little bit more flat than I expected, but yeah, there's the other light. So what I can do probably is get a plane like this and then put it in front just to block that light and then have these lights influence only, but you know what, it's okay for now. So if I hop back into the camera, we're gonna see what those lights do, and there it is. All right, so let's go to setup number three, the final setup. This one's a little bit more complicated. There's a few things I need to explain here, but essentially I wanted to do a very similar setup to what I had in setup number two, which is basically, let me go ahead and draw it out here. So let me actually grab a light here. So say we have our burger, right? Don't laugh at my drawing, but that's my burger. Basically our setup number two, so I'm gonna put setup 02, was a light right here, right? Coming down here. And then we had, um, so it was, I'll just put a beauty dish here, or a light here, and then a light here, right? Um, this is, It was more backlit, but you, you get the idea. It was two rim lights and then a top light. So setup number three is actually kind of the same thing. Setup number three is the same thing, but what I wanted to do for this light over here was I uh, usually with this light, the light's gonna spread like this, right? Or depending on what setting you have for your lights, the lighting can spread like this, which is basically gonna cover the entirety of the burger. But what I did in this shot was I added two planes here. I don't know if I can draw it here. Uh, so I added two planes here, okay? 
uh, two planes here to kind of narrow in that light to make it uh, a little bit more dramatized. Because like I mentioned in the first setup, I do like my lighting setups a little bit more on the moodier side, a little bit more dramatic. So I wanted to take what I saw in setup number two and make it a little bit more moody. So I'm adding these two planes to kind of block. Let me actually show you here. Oops, let me actually, yeah. So I took these two planes and I'm blocking this light right here, which is our key light. Let me actually take out the these lights here, light blocker. Um, so these two planes right here, it's under a gobo and it's controlled by this slider right here so I can widen it or narrow it as much as I want. But essentially it's blocking light from this top light over here, um, which is just a typical area light and then using these blockers to pretty much like a gobo. And uh, let's, let's actually show you what that looks like. So I'm going to hit render, alt Q. You see how the the light is so, it's narrowed in so that it's pretty much concentrating itself right here in this area. So we get a lot of shadow here and a lot of shadow here, but we keep the light concentrated here. If I were to take out this uh, gobo here, turn this off, and then turn off that plane, um, you see how the difference here is that there's a much more uh, light hitting the sides here. So we don't want that, or at least I didn't want that. So what I ended up doing was getting a plane, putting that under a cloner, setting the count on the X to two. And then with this distance slider, I can control how much light I want on this, at least on this sliver of the burger. And then if I want to make that shadow a little bit more pronounced, I can bring this down like so. You can see that the this line, this definition gets a lot more defined. And I'm gonna bring this up a little bit more. Let's go to 408 or 409 is where I had it. So this was kind of like a middle ground. Uh, the last one was a little bit too dramatized, but this one looked really good. So I kept it like that. All right, so let's move on to the rim lights. Um, the rim lights are pretty much gonna be uh, placed right about here. So right here and right here. And they're going to be pointing inwards this way, which is going to basically mimic what we had in the last setup. Um, it's going to have two rim lights over here on the, over here on our burger. And it's going to create this really moody, but punchy type of look, which I actually really liked. So let's go ahead and turn those on. And you can see rim lights on this side, rim, light, rim lights also on this side, which is really nice. All right. And then the last set the last lighting I had here was on this background. I actually left some space between the background and the ground so that I can put a light right at the bottom here, which adds a nice gradiated light upwards, which kind of completes the look. To be honest, I actually like this type of look where the light direction on the object itself looks like it's coming from the top down or the side top down. And then the environment light in the background um, has a light, a light direction that looks like it's going up. Mixing those two together, I think create a really nice um, sort of a juxtaposition. And I think it works. The last thing for this shot was this part of the shot right here. So this part, this highlight was actually really distracting. So to fix that, I added another plane and I placed it right here to kind of block that light. If you can see it right here, see this light? So if I move this up, it's gonna block pretty much the burger because it's going a little bit too high right here. But if I bring it down just enough, right about there, we kind of take out that large highlight. There's still some here, but I'm okay with that because it is closer to the subject itself. But having no light blocker in there actually created too much of a highlight here where it became distracting. So I added a play, I added a light blocker here and I think it worked. All right, so that is setup number three.